Hello friends, my name is Nikhil Singh Chadak and I am working as an assistant professor in School of Vocational Studies, Ambedkar University, Delhi. Today I will be discussing about the topic protection and promotion of Indian culture and arts and the importance of cultural tourism. Subtopics which I will be covering under the same are government, its policy and planning, a brief history we will be discussing here, tourism policy in protecting and promoting Indian culture and arts, again a very important topic under this segment. Indian tourism policy, need for reorientation, we would be discussing about the past tourism policies and the latest Indian draft tourism policy 2020. And finally, we would be discussing about the suggestions and the recommendations. After studying this unit, you will be able to understand the various steps taken by government to protect and promote Indian culture and arts and to explain the Indian government tourism policy to promote cultural tourism in terms of the history behind tourism policy and the latest tourism policies given by government time to time. So the first topic is government, its policy and planning. Here we would be discussing about a brief history also in terms of how Indian government has promoted its culture and tradition. In this section, we will be discussing various steps taken by government to protect and promote Indian culture and arts. India possesses a complex and multi-layered, multi-dimensional cultural fabric with strong regional identities. To accommodate such elaborate culture, Indian government developed vast structure to plan and implement various schemes and programs. During the pre-independence period, British government promoted few cultural institutions like National Library, Archaeological Survey of India, Botanical Gardens, Anthropological Survey of India. But there was no state finance or organizational support available to the crafts. Whatever all India institutions of culture were developed were the sheer volunteer efforts. After independence, need was felt that Indian government should frame certain policies to protect and promote Indian arts and crafts and its cultural heritage. So it was the need of the hour to redraft the various policies after independence and to re-energize the various policies pertaining to protection and promotion of Indian arts, crafts and its culture. The basic responsibility of administering cultural rest on Union Ministry of Human Resource Development, its Department of Culture is the main in charge of policy planning and execution. It maintains and directly administers certain cultural institutions like Archaeological Survey of India, National Museum, National Library, National Archives, National Gallery of Modern Art. Besides, it provides financial support to number of autonomous bodies and also to volunteer efforts in lit literally performing and plastic arts. The Union Ministry of Information and Broadcasting looks after and control mass media, both radio and television. It also administers Directorate of Advertising and Visual Publicity with the aim to disseminate cultural heritage to the masses. It has also two publicity units, Press Information Bureau and Directorate of Field Publicity. Besides, its song and drama division looks after the entertainment of large audience. The film division is a central film producing organization responsible for production of documentary films to educate people and spread and preserve Indian cultural heritage. The mass media organizations were set up with the aim for popular entertainment and to disseminate information about regional, national and international developments. It was expected that all programs to include light cultural content to create awareness about diverse Indian culture among the masses. As we all know that India is a land of diversity. Primarily all India radio and television programs consist of children's programs, programs on music, dance, drama, educational programs, news bulletins. Besides Hindi and English, other regional language programs are also shown or broadcast on all India Radio and Doordarshan. Also, there are separate stations of all India Radio all over. India which broadcasts programs in a regional language, similarly regional level Doordarshan Kendras show programs, news etc. in regional languages for a wider appeal. Another important component of media is films. Its entertainment value and impact on the public mind is well established. 
the government's role in making feature films is confined largely to giving subsidies and to institute awards for best films otherwise indian film industry is highly commercial and private financed however in making documentaries govern government plays significant role and they are prepared largely either as a propaganda or for information on indian culture in 1960 pune films institute was established under the aegis of ministry of information and broadcasting for providing diploma courses in photography sound recording and engineering film acting and film editing of course was also there later national film archives of india in 1964 and indian institute of mass communication in 1965 were established so lot of efforts were put all together to promote and preserve our indian culture immediately after independence three academies uh, academies were also set up national academy of letters sahitya academy in 1952 national academy of arts lalit kala academy 1953 and national academy of music dance and drama sangeet natak academy in 1953 the aim of establishing all these academies was not only to revitalize nourish and nurture traditional arts but also to create better opportunities for the artist the importance i mean the important academic sangeet natak academy working in the field of dance drama and music is expected to promote research in the fields of performing arts and coordinate activities in these fields since its inception it is involved in organizing competitions seminars festivals etc it provides subsidies for publication and research work in the field of performing arts there is a special unit of service and documentation of folk music dance and drama annual awards are given by the academy in the field of classical music it has established three national institutions national school school of drama a very important school in context to our culture manipur college dance and kathak kendras to provide training in various fields of performing arts museums are also established to conserve and preserve artifacts and to serve as a center and public education and recreation they also organize small exhibitions particularly to educate and create awareness about cultural heritage of india among school and college students they are also used for research purposes they regularly publish guide books and information bulletins however there is still great need of better training facilities for this purpose there are 16 exclusive site archaeological museums where artifacts of various archaeological sites are preserved in this regard one can name indian museum calcutta prince of wales museum mumbai national museum new delhi and seller jung museum hyderabad to preserve the extinct tri tribal culture government has set up various museums where living tribal culture is preserved manav sansthan of bhopal is a unique attempt in this direction similarly in new delhi a separate adim jati sang sanglyan was set up where not only various tribal traditions are preserved and depicted through visuals but it also coordinates with various tribal groups for the development of various tribal communities the government of india as well as various state governments offer grants to museums and formulate policies related to the, their management and functions in order to further promote our culture at a global level to preserve india's richest craft tradition that is handloom and handicrafts various organizations like the all india village khati development board all india handicrafts board were set up indian government policies are primarily framed with the aim of preserving sustaining and promoting indigenous village industry which is very important artisan and craft tradition is embedded with the day to day activities of rural masses immediately after independence indian government launched plans for development of handicrafts and handlooms the prime task before the government was to sustain the craft tradition as part of village culture instead of reducing it to museum pieces to fulfill this objective in the four government had to provide economic support to make the artisans economically independent the government also took steps to create a greater demand and launch programs to accelerate handloom production for exports 
With this purpose, various handicrafts and handloom boats, units, etc., have been set up, thus putting a thirst on the growth of culture and tradition in our country. From time to time, policies were framed for this purpose. For example, Handlooms Act was passed in Parliament in 1985. Besides, special provisions are made in each five-year plans for handloom sector. To provide financial support on easy terms, in 1983, NABAT was set up. Likewise, separate budget provisions are made for the development of tribal handicraft, thus promoting our culture in a unique way. But in spite of government's all efforts, still a lot more has to be done as the real profit is still not reaching the artisans. They could hardly achieve more than the substantial level. There are problems in getting short-term and long-term loans. Many are even not aware about various schemes of the government, various policies in operation for their development and to get the loans. Therefore, in spite of the existing schemes, they are not actually benefited by them. Therefore, there is need to create more awareness regarding the various assistance programs of the government among the rural masses and the tribals. There is also need to make care, care that real profit should reach the artisans, influence of brokers, middlemen and must be minimized. Indian Council of Cultural Relations is another autonomous organization created under the Ministry of External Affairs which work for the promotion of Indian culture overseas and it has done lot of efforts for the same. Arranging or sponsoring the visits of Indian artists abroad, holding promotional fairs depicting Indian culture, heritage, etc. are the tasks undertaken by this organization and it has put in lot of efforts to promote our culture at a global level. Tourism policy, protection and promotion. The World Tourism Organization sees the role of policy as the means by which government motivations can be balanced with private sector improvement. So protection and promotion again of our culture is very important and here we would be discussing about the various tourism policies given time to time. This is primarily because in views tourism as one of the few development options for the third world countries and a means of participation in the international trade. The World Tourism Organization therefore recommends that all countries to realize the value of the process of liberalization would have a tourism policy which defines the means by which objectives of tourism development are to be realized. To be meaningful, these objectives should be fixed in a certain development plan which has the sanction of the government. The first ever tourism policy was announced by the government of India in November 1982. It was one of the efforts which were made by the Indian government to promote our tourism. It was more an aggressive statement in marketing than a prospective plan for development in 1982. Its main thrust was aimed at presenting India to the foreigners as the ultimate holiday resort destination. With a view to reach this destination, the following measures were taken. It was stated in that policy was to take full advantage of the national heritage in arriving at a popular campaign for attracting tourists, to promote tourists, resorts and make India as a destination of holiday resorts to grant the status of an export industry to tourism, to adopt a selective approach to develop few tourist circuits and to invite private sector participation into the sector. So that particular tourism policy has brought so many inputs in order to promote our country as a leading tourist destination. The Planning Commission recognized tourism as an industry by 1992 in June 1992 as is very clear from above tourism policy was considered by government as an industry which should use India's cultural heritage as commodity to attract foreign and travelers. The major development in tourism policy of India came in the National Action Plan for Tourism in 1992. Its central concerns were socio-economic development of areas like increasing employment opportunities with the help of developing tourism products, developing domestic tourism for budget category, preserving national heritage and environment of our country. It is again a very, very important aspect. Then to develop uh, our destination as an international tourist destination, then diversification of the tourism products and to increase in India's share in world tourism. So it, these were the agendas which were taken under the National Action Plan of Tourism in 1992. The eighth plan document makes a special mention that the future expansions of the tourism should be achieved mainly by private sector participation. The thirst areas as 
ensured in the plan include development of selected tourist places, diversification from cultural related tourism to holiday and leisure tourism, development of tracking, winter sports, wildlife and beach, sea resort tourism, exploring new source markets, restoration of national heritage products, launching of national image building, etc. So these were the initiatives taken by the government. It is evident from the contents of this document that now there is a greater stress was given on preservation of our cultural heritage. Contrary to the policy of 1982, where it was suggested to commoditize the culture, the eight plan proposed diversification of tourist attractions from more cultural heritage perspective. This change in orientation is very crucial as India is moving on the road of development and it needs a positive image rather than a country of snake charmers and the rope trick. As part of government tourism policy, certain cultural attractions are being promoted. The Department of Tourism intends to set up craft village in different parts of the country to provide a boost for the traditional handicraft of various regions in New Delhi. Like Delhi Heart and Craft Museum, a kind of ship gram which exhibits the crafts of different regions throughout the year have been started. The Suraj Kund Craft Mela, Ship Gram, Udaipur have been a tremendous draw in the tourists. Organization of Republic Day celebrations in India is a big cultural event. It attracts large number, not only foreign tourists, but also number of domestic tourists visit Delhi to see the event. Lot of events like Paritan Perv is also being organized closely in association with Indian government to promote our culture. Certain fairs and festivals have been identified by Ministry of Tourism and assistance is being given to develop and publicize them to attract inland and foreign tourists, fairs like Pushkar Fair, Sonpur Cattle Fair, Kite Festival and the Shera Festival in Mysore and Kullu. These, these are all already attracted tourist destinations. Ministry gives liberal financial assistance to develop these traditional fairs and festivals all over the country and promote them aggressively in the international market. Festival of India and India Fest are attempts in this direction. So, a lot of efforts have been already put up to create a huge impact of our Indian culture and bring foreign tourists in our country. At important tourist centers where earlier there were no structured arrangements for organizing cultural events which could provide an experience or a glimpse of Indian culture to visiting foreign tourists. Now, it will be the endeavor of the government to help and tie up with zonal cultural centers, regional and national level cultures and making arrangements at important tourist destinations to organize cultural evenings various events, craft bazaars, food plazas and fairs and festivals all, all around the year. Such activities will be organized in coordination with the Department of Culture and Archaeological Survey of India. Festivals like Konak and Khajurao, light and sound programs and the Red Fort and Purana Kila in New Delhi and Gwalior Fort are some of the attempts in the same direction. Tourism policy need for reorientation. So, this is again one of the very important topic which I will be discussing now. So, under this it is suggested that existing thirst of our tourism policy should be recognized and to locate alterations within the reality of cultural heritage and existing socio-economic conditions. So, it is important to reorientate, uh, re, uh, kind of a reorientation should be done in terms of a tourism, tourism policy to promote our Indian culture. South Asian destinations have a marginal share of the international tourism market and the 60s vision of the economic and development benefits and foreign exchange earnings from tourism continues to dominate the developmental debate. Tourism is penetrating deeper in our political and economic thinking and our culture. Experience however shows that the tourism industry draws and accountings infrastructure the most important and complex the rest of the economy. The greater are the economy gains and the power of econom economy to retain the value added in the country. So, we have to reformulate our tourism policy and reorientate it towards Indian culture. Tourism policy in India which is conceived and pushed from the top is always justified and legitimized by the yardsticks of customer satisfaction to ensure a competitive tourism growth, tourism professionals and officials are to be encouraged to take an active participation in the decision making process. In the free market economies, few needs are satisfied locally. Products originate in communities that cannot consume them and determining factors is access to money and the empowerment it gives to the consumer. Tourism is an advanced form of consumerization that depends on the distant unknown other to supply it. It 
complies people who have unknown names and identities to sacrifice the means of meet their daily needs so that affluent tourists can eff effortlessly reach out to whether they desire at their price or not. An alternate tourism policy must reject this value system. It must stop just being consumer oriented. It focus should be on that form of tourism that encourages an exchange of culture and wealth, a sharing of skills and problems. This would in include both domestic and international tourists who wish to come at the terms of the destination, to go there, to experience our local culture and traditions. In India has developed resistance to tourism. It is because that people at the destination have no role in decision making or in the benefits from tourism. So it is important to involve the local community also in terms of the tourism product development precisely in terms of cultural tourism. Therefore, the tourism policy must be redefined by people's need, people's movements and people's organizations in cooperation with similar bodies and counterparts elsewhere keeping in view the con conservation and preservation of culture. So it is very important to include all the stakeholders as well as the local community whenever we are defining any tourism policy pertaining to culture in order to protect and promote our Indian culture. Initiatives taken by the government, again a very important topic. Under this, Indian government plans to un unveil a new tourism policy very soon and has embarked on a journey to achieve the top ranking in the sector by 2024 despite all the challenges. Currently, we are also going through a particular pandemic. So that is why there are a lot of huge challenges, but still Indian government is trying to bring our Indian tourism products in a global map and has a target of coming to the top ranks by 2024. Recently, the center circulated a new proposed tourism policy among states for its finalization. It focuses on developing medical, religious, culture and other facets of tourism and offering new destinations other than the popular one which we already have like Taj Mahal and Qutub Minar. So the recent Indian draft tourism policy has putting lot of emphasis on the niche tourism products as well as the cultural tourism product which is our main one of the main and strongest tourism product in order to generate revenue as well as the employment as well as to attract international tourists. So as per the draft tourism policy it has been envisaged to promote India as a superpower in cultural tourism to promote cultural tourism products under incredible India campaign. Of course under incredible India campaign lot of emphasis has been given to promote our cultural tourism products. Nine key strategic pillars have been identified under, under this latest draft tourism policy for the growth and promotion of tourism. While each strategic pillar addresses specific areas, they also support each other towards our vision of transforming our destinations, the Indian destinations to create world class visitor experiences. The nine key strategic pillars are supported by two cross cutting themes. So the nine uh, strategic pillars under the draft tourism policy are welcoming the visitor, seamless connectivity and transport infrastructure, destination planning and development management precisely, precisely in terms of the cultural tourism products, business development and investment pr promotion, development and diversif diversification of tourism products, skill development, uh, again a very important aspect in terms of developing a skilled manpower to promote our tourism products, market India campaigns, quality assurance and standardization, market intelligence and research. So these are the nine very important key pillars which uh, Indian government has come up in their latest draft tourism policy. Finally, various suggestions and recommendations to protect and promote cultural tourism. So under this particular segment, emphasis has been given on the conversation and sustainable use of cultural tourism resources because it is very important to sustain our cultural tourism resources. Maintaining and promoting natural, social and cultural diversity is essential for long term sustainable tourism and creates a resilient base for the industry. Marketing that provides tourists with the full and responsible information increases respect for the natural, social and the cultural environments of destination areas and enhances customer satisfaction. So we need to put customer satisfaction of utmost importance in terms of whenever we are promoting our cultural tourism products. Make positive contribution to the conservation of natural and cultural heritage to the maintenance of the world diversity. 
sensitization of tourists traveling to ecologically and culturally fragile areas to respect environment again a very important aspect in terms of whenever we are promoting world cultural tourism products preservation of its natural and cultural assets in the long run and catalyze the benefits for the local economy and the residents and behave responsibly responsibly is again one of the important recommendation protect and capitalizing capitalizing on the local heritage as well as the cultural and creative assets should be done in a way that benefits the destination the industry and the visitors who would be visiting the various destinations history and cultural heritage are reasons for many tourists to visit a destination combining these aspects with new creative ideas makes them continuously attractive also for the younger generations a strong public private partnership is also important to restore and adopt our historical and cultural assets into tourism products would go a long way in preserving not just built heritage but also our intangible assets like folk arts dance forms theaters which we have already discussed in our previous discussions like all these factors plays a very important role in the promotion of indian culture creating experiences around our heritage sites and monuments with interpretation facilities souvenir shops eateries and other conveniences would enhance the overall visitor experience so friends let's sum up all the topics which we have covered today this under this particular unit which we have discussed today about the various government policies we discuss about things regarding protection and promotion of indian culture we spoke about the history the background before independence era and after independence era we also discuss about the various tourism policies pertaining to the preservation of indian culture which is the need of the hour to sustain our indian culture and at the same time to give full satisfaction to the visitors who are visiting a need for the reorientation of the indian tourism policy was also set up and discussed as a new draft tourism policy has already come up and lot of things and discussions have been going around uh recently in order to reorientate our tourism policy finally latest developments in context to cultural tourism as well as various recommendations given by latest tourism policies which which have been given by ministry of tourism lately have all we have all also been discussed thank you very much